when we get into Lightroom, we have this, this whole set of tools sitting right in front of us. We got things to work with, and yet we have to find a way to make that efficient. You know, we could spend inordinate, infinite amounts of time on an individual image. What presets do for us is they give us a toolkit. They give us a variety of tools and, and things that we wouldn't try otherwise. They organize it in such a fashion that they say, okay, these are our batch automations. You know, these are creative effects. Power Workflow does that brilliantly because it's designed around that modular concept of here we're importing a thousand images. Let's apply something to all of those that can jazz them up a little bit. And then now we're sorting down, you know, let's get into some creative effects. Now we're refining. Let's look at some black and white and some creative color. Now we're ready to finish and make prints. Let's look at, at some tools to work finishing details and sharpening. It's a system designed to make the tools that are right there in front of you that much easier to work with and access and give you that variety. That's Power Workflow 4. So let's dig in and let's take a look at Power Workflow. Let me show you what Power Workflow can do for our images, for our creativity, for our efficiency to help us become better photographers. So I'm just going to come into Lightroom here, and I have a random group of images, just a lot of variety here to kind of deal with different things. One of the powerful things about Power Workflow 4 is it's designed to be completely versatile. Any situation, large groups of images, small groups of images, it has a bit of everything, and it's designed and organized for workflow. I, I've had to deal with almost every scenario in workflow, from working with thousands of images at a time down to working with individual landscapes like this one and trying to do detailed refinements. Over here, we have Power Workflow 3. It's going to show up in our presets panel after we install it. Now, if you haven't installed it yet and you need help, there's a separate video over at simefx.com, and we do show how to install presets over there. So I'm going to assume you've gone ahead and installed the presets, and we'll just take a look at it from here. I also have some of the other preset collections like Color Fantasies and Silver Shadows, but we're going to focus on Power Workflow. So I'm just going to expand this out. And the first thing you're going to notice in Power Workflow 4, and a, a huge upgrade for this, that actually is going to make a lot of difference in the way we work is the remarkable amount of organization. We put a ton of planning into the organization of the presets, not only in how they're positioned, designed for a workflow, designed for coming in saying, okay, let's start here and let's work our way through, but also right down to the way that they're, they're titled and named so that rather than being a long list of presets, rather than having this kind of mess that you got to sift through, they're organized, starting with the super tools is the first category. There's actually five categories. We have the super tools, the modifiers. We have the silver, which is black and white, of course. And then we have color powers and finishing utilities. So within those five categories, then we have these different tools that are kind of tiered and designed in such a way that you can easily go through them, stay organized and kind of stay on task. While at the same time, you can mouse over and you can see the preview up in the top left there as we browse over different presets and get different effects. Now, we start in Power Workflow with the super tools. There's, of course, no rule about what preset you have to apply first, but the super tools are designed to be extremely versatile. That means, let's say we come in here and we have all these images. I'm going to go back to the grid mode with the G key. Okay, so I have 40 photos in here. What I want to do is I just want to select these photos. And let me just zoom out here a little bit and show a few more of these. I'm going to select these photos. And what I'm going to do is go up here in the library mode to save preset. So from here, you can apply a preset to a group of images. And I've selected all these presets. You can command A or you can click and shift or click and control to select multiple images. I'm gonna to go to the save preset, select Power Workflow 4, and the list of presets pops up right here. Nice and tidy. Normally, let's say I, I import a group of images and I wanna just do a general correction on those images. I'll generally start with something like Super Normal or Super General. Uh, the Superhero utilizes the auto tone functions in Lightroom. Sometimes those can be great, other times they mess up the image. So especially as I've, I've gone further in my photography and my exposures tend to be fairly accurate, I'll use something like Super General, which is a general purpose correction. So literally if I have a wedding and, and there's 2000 images sitting there, I'll come in and either do it on import or afterward from right here, and I'll apply a general preset. So I'm going to go ahead and apply super normal. And you see up in the left there, it's applying the preset. And you can see it's going to go through 
and start applying to these images. Now, in a group like this, sometimes the presets will take a, a few moments to apply across the images. But the bottom line is we're going through here and we're applying a general correction. That doesn't mean all these images are finished. Oftentimes, I'll still work in a grid edit sense where I'll select images and use quick develop to, you know, boost exposure on individual images and kind of go through and, and in that grid mode, get things looking balanced. One of the powerful things about Power Workflow is that it it pretty much leaves exposure alone with the exception of, of the auto adjustment presets like superhero. Our presets use curves. They use different settings to control light and dark of an image and get different effects without adjusting your exposure, which means you can come in, you can apply a preset to a large group of group of images like this, and you can go through in this quick mode and do quick exposure corrections and things like that and make sure your images are balanced. Make sure things are looking good because only you can really know what your exposure intent was with an image. So you can go through, if any changes are needed, you can quickly do kind of that, that grid style edit and bump up an image here, turn down a little exposure there and get things looking the way you want them. Then you can go into the develop mode. So we've now applied this super normal X preset to these images. Just to give you an illustration on this particular image, let me do a reset. This is something else you'll see throughout Power Workflow. You see all these header presets that define each of the categories. If you click on those, any of those, it will reset your image and your develop settings without altering things like your crop and your local adjustments, your spot corrections. Now there are some other presets down here for resetting vignettes, gradients and radials, resetting lens corrections, that sort of thing. But the general reset tool just resets those all the base develop settings. So I'm gonna reset this. Here's the base. Now let me just undo that reset and you'll see here, this was the effect of the super gentle. It is a gentle effect, but it brings back some tonal range. It makes things pop just a little bit more. It's designed to be a light preset that can work on literally any image. And that's why we kind of start with those. Now, of course, we can go down here and use things like Superhero for full, full auto corrections, Super Silver for a quick black and white conversion that's really versatile, uh, Super HDR if you want to get more of a dynamic range approach to an image very quickly and really bring out a lot of that range. And you see how we've really brought out range in the, in the sun and throughout this scene. Let me just reset this to normal again and look at how much that's changed. Now, if we want something a little more delicate that's less of an HDR and more of a tone control, the Supertone Equalizer X is great for that, for just bringing some tone out without losing the contrast and the richness of an image. So as we go through, we see these different images and we can see how that we can use different super tools to affect an image in a different way. Let's apply superhero. This is a full auto preset, so it's affecting exposure and things like that, and frankly, it's going too far. This is a common problem with Lightroom's auto tone feature. Sometimes it misses it. So they're great tools to have. The superhero X and superhero X white balance. Basically, use the auto tone, but then they add some curves and things like that to jazz things up a bit. So they can be really useful. One, of course, leaves, leaves the white balance alone, and the other alters your white balance. Let me just reset that. Another thing about the effects throughout Power Workflow 4 is they leave exposure alone, and you'll see that here. Let me just adjust the exposure of this up a little bit, all right? But then let me apply something like Super Gentle. You see it applies its effects, but it totally left our exposure alone over here. It also leaves the white balance alone, and that's the case with most of our presets. The problem is with affecting color tone in a preset using white balance is it's going to be different across every image because different images have different bases for what the color tone is. So in Power Workflow, when we add color tones, we use other tools. We use channels. We use split toning and things like that to add color tones, and we'll come to those in a minute. We have our super tools, and we can go through, and we can get a lot of powerful effects, very easy. Let me just apply Super HDR to this one. And I'm just going to reset that now and show you kind of the before and after. Let's do Super Silver on that one. The Super Series st is the start of Power Workflow. Very general purpose, very functional stuff. Then we go down. Everything in Category 1 is under the Super Tools. So we see there's some reset tools, like the reset gradients and radials, reset lens corrections. And to correspond with that, you'll see down here in the Super Tools, we also have radial vignettes, classic vignettes, lens correct auto, a lot of tools that 
are really useful and powerful four makes those right at hand so you can quickly jump in and use those but if we want to go back we can quickly adjust those now if i reset it's going to do resets but it's not going to have reset radials it's not going to reset gradients it's not going to reset lens corrections so if i want to reset that as well i can reset those individually right here using these resets now you can of course also use shift command r or shift control r and completely reset an image using the default lightroom reset down here that's really useful but it's going to literally reset the image back to its original state no corrections no adjustments no spot removal that's why the reset tools within power workflow are incredibly useful now, as we go down, we see this, these various tools like applying up, upright auto, doing lens correct auto, all this kind of stuff we can go through and use in Power Workflow. But then we come to a series that is incredibly powerful and I'm really excited about. Essentially, every preset in Power Workflow 4 is either new or revamped. But what is really going to blow you away is the Magic series in Power Workflow 4. And everything in our in our image making there's always going to be problems that arise in the real world you know you're at a wedding you're at a portrait things happen and it's not always perfect one thing that power workflow for deals with that has not been addressed much in the past is a quick way to fix common problems and that's what the magic series is we have the series of magic presets starting with the harsh sun fixer harsh sun is one of the banes and if I'm, if I'm doing a portrait or something like that, generally I try and do sunrise, sunset. I try and control the light or use modifiers or something like that. But there's always going to be instances where we're dealing with a situation where you have harsh sun, you have harsh conditions, and you just have to make it work. Harsh sun magic is something that I've put a lot of work into, and you can't take problematic light and make it your perfect ideal. But you can make it better. And that's exactly what the Harsh Sun Magic does. It balances out the tones and it gives uh, a richness as if you were in a more natural overcast situation. Brings back uh, details and highlights and just does an enormous amount. This is a phenomenal general purpose correction. I'm just going to reset that and let's go back and apply Harsh Sun Magic. Let's just go through a couple and apply Harsh Sun Magic to a few different images. And look at how powerful this is. That harsh, nasty sun look really makes it more natural and brings out a lot of information. The cool thing is this is really versatile across different images that have a harsh sun kind of situation. You can quickly and efficiently balance that out and make those images a lot more usable, especially in situations where you're working with a portrait, you're working with a wedding, something like that. It really works them over quickly. And this is more, you know, far more than just a quick highlight reduction. This is a very subtle refined preset. It leaves exposure alone. It leaves white balance alone. It uses complex curves. It uses channels. It uses all this stuff to bring back an image and make it as powerful as possible. But there's more in the magic presets than just that. Let's look at another situation that's common and that is ugly shade. You know, if harsh sun is one of our banes having flat ugly shade where things are just kind of gray and flat is another one. This is a nice image but it's kind of flat and boring. Now, ugly, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but Ugly Shade Fixer is really versatile and it deals with the opposite of Harsh Sun. So the key with the magic presets is it gives us tools that we can go in and target specific problems in an image, glance over, apply an effect, and get an improvement. Let's actually turn the exposure down a little bit on this one because it's a bit high. And let's just do a reset to the original and go back to this one right here. Let's go to another one. Here's one here. Again, a nice image, but it's real flat. And we need more than just a contrast shift. We need to kind of bring that warmth in that we've lost in this real flat lit shade. You know, if the sun was just setting over the horizon and we had kind of a golden glow on them, this would be different. But as you can see here, the sun is probably set and we've, we've lost that light. We're going to apply the ugly shade fixer and just bring back some of that warmth. The beauty of Power Workflow 4 is we're always working in the Lightroom environment. We're using tools that are already there. What Power Workflow does is it puts those at your fingertips. You can at any time switch over to this side to your develop module and adjust things manually to get the look you need. Everything is right there at your fingertips to bring in the look you want. 
Here's another one here. You know, we were in a daylight situation, but we're in the shade. We've got a reasonable exposure on her face. It's it's a little bit dark, but it's just kind of flat and plain. And we'll apply the ugly shade fixer and just boom, bring some of that out. And this is vastly improved. Again, let me just reset original and go to this one. We've done a little exposure correction on it and applied the ugly shade fixer. Very, very versatile stuff. There's different magic presets for different situations. Bad hall light for dealing with, let's say, a reception hall. You know, you, you've just got this ugly, horrible light. Now, I've done an exposure correction on this. It was a bit dark, but this looks terrible. The, the bad hall light is designed to balance that out. You can't take an image that has a problem and make everything perfect. It's always better to get it right in camera, but this balances that out, and it gives you more control. How about another common problem? We've all seen this before. You get uh, a portrait and you're kind of on the fly or whatever's gone on. Maybe it's a reception, red cheeks, red faces, and people just don't look good. And you know they're not going to want to look that way in the portrait. Now, there's there's certainly different ways you could address this and you could manually go in. But let's say you did a group of uh, portraits at a reception and they all kind of have this look. That's where the red face fixer comes in. Very specific, but it works phenomenal. One click... Let's reset, look at the original, and apply the red face. Look at the difference. It just cleans out that harsh redness, gives a little bit of pop to the faces. The Magic Series presets have been targeted to specific situations, to dealing with problems and bringing out details in an image, and they do it really, really well. Let's go back to here and uh, reset this one to default. We see we have quite a bit of clipping going and on in here. Now, we could use some of the Super Series. They work well for this, too. But if you really want to specifically just target clipping and bring back as much of that highlight detail as possible, the Clip Fixer, which is a BS Series preset, mean, meaning it only uses the basic series tones. We're just going to click that and pull back a large amount of that dynamic range and pretty much pull this stuff out of clipping. Obviously, there's still some light areas in this scene, but we've just recovered a great deal of information from this. Modifiers are presets in Power Workflow that specifically add effects to an image while leaving other primary effects alone. So, for example, we've worked up here. We've set white balance, exposure, contrast, highlights, that kind of stuff. And we want to keep applying effects, but we want to leave those alone because we're happy with those settings. That's what we see in the modifiers. Now, you can see a whole list of what all the modifier notations do on the guide at simeffects.com. The tool guide gives a detail of all the current modifier notations. But this is a whole collection of just modifiers. TC is just a tone curve. CP uh, is a channel process. It uses only channels. It leaves curves alone. It leaves the basic settings alone. And XI is one of our original modifier designations, which basically can affect everything except the basic. So anything in the basic settings you know is going to be left alone. Controlled contrast, make it flatter, fix the flat, which is, of course, adding too much contrast in this case. Let's go back. You notice that I got to a point where... I was getting weird with the image. I was getting too much. And this will happen sometimes when you're applying multiple presets. I quickly just went to one of the headers and did a reset of that image and then went and started over. And you can do this at any time. Now, a non-modifier image, these primary presets, generally they, they will affect any combination of settings. But for example, you might have a preset that affects your split toning over here and then you might apply another preset that leaves split toning alone. So you can still mix and match throughout the series, but if you ever get something you don't like, just go back to that quick reset, click it, and start over. We can go through all these and see different images. Let's go down this one to tints. These are also part of the modifier. What these do is rather than presets that give a color tone along with a bunch of other effects, what we've done is we've got the tint category down here in the modifiers, and all these do is apply various color tints to an image without affecting anything else. So you can see that we can drastically affect an image. We can add a cooling filter. We can add a warming filter and go through these kind of essential tints to get different effects, whether it's a black and white or a color image, and have a profound effect on the image without altering the other settings. In this case, we're just adding these tones down here. Then we come to category three, and that's the, pu the pure silver category. It's very simple and straightforward. What we've done is 
is kept it simple. We put some essential tools. So if you want to do great black and white conversions, you can do them right here. Now for people like me that really love black and white, I'll go in and I'll get into silver shadows, which is a complete preset collection dedicated to black and white. And that can take it a lot further. Just like for those moments when I really want to tinker with color, I can go into color fantasies. The, the power of Power Workflow 4 is that we have a little bit of everything right here and it's designed to be at your fingertips, quick and easy to work with. Let's just apply a couple of different effects and we can just see these different black and whites and how they alter this image in different ways. Let's get one we like here. Now, we mentioned those tints a moment ago. Let's go up and add a modifier to this. We're gonna add a tint preset and just get a nice bronze sepia tone to this black and white. Let's just reset it and start over, do an everyday silver, go back and let's apply another tint, like maybe the gentle blue. Power Workflow 4 is not only about quick, efficient application, it's about giving you control. The goal of Power Workflow is to not make your images look like my images. It's not to give you a style that looks like Gavin Syme or that looks like John Smith. It's to give you control so you can quickly apply effects and then if you want to, you can come over here and you can tweak them as you want and get your look out of them. Finally, we come down here and we get into color powers. Color powers are full process effects uh, that are a little more intense and you can go through here and just get kind of cross processes and just neat color mixes and effects that use a combination of tones and channels and, and anything else that is useful. Everything from simple, subtle processes getting into more bold cross-processing and intense effects like LOTR or 400 Warriors. Of course, you can always just reset really quickly. Let's go back to here. I want to take this one here. And here's our finished utilities. These are something that I will often apply to a group of images, or you can apply individually. Again, they're designed as kind of that wrap-up point to do some finishing details, things like noise reduction, sharpening, and that sort of stuff. Let's zoom in on this one and get this hot air balloon up close. It's gonna be a little harder in a video to illustrate this, so we won't take too much time on it, but let's just apply something like a pin sharp or the Film Magic Detailer, which is one of my favorites. I apply this on images a lot on export. It's a gentle sharpening and a little bit of grain. Again, you're not gonna see a lot of difference in this video because it's gonna be too small. These are about subtle tools, a little bit of sharpening before you go to print, a little bit of grain to kind of give a natural film-like feel. Let's just go ahead and reset this to default just so you can see some of the difference. Let me go ahead and apply something like Power Sharp and you'll see that. Let's apply Pin Sharp and you get a little bit different sharpness. Film Magic, Grainiac is a strong grain effect that isn't going to be good for everything, but sometimes you want a bit of a grain look and it'll work good, especially if you're doing a black and white or something like that. The bottom line is, whether you're bringing in 5,000 images and you need to do a general global correction so that you can go into editing and then apply some more effects, or whether you're going in and working on a specific art piece that you want to bring some more quality to and refinement to before you go to print, before you do your burning and dodging and things like that. Power Workflow 4 is an unparalleled powerful collection of presets that puts control at your fingertips. I'm just going to reset this one to default of these trees and I'm just going to kind of browse through and we're going to look at what some different effects do on this. The neat thing with Lightroom is you can just browse over and see what different effects do and then apply them. I'm going to put the flat light fixer on this one. And it just gives that kind of golden warmth that we like to see. It brings a little bit of pop into that light that was not bad, but a little bit flat. Let's just reset that to default again. A lot of subtlety in our new series of presets. These aren't about going in and doing these over-the-top presets that we see a lot of where they worked good on the one image that they were designed with, but everything else, anything goes, and you never know what you're going to end up with. We're testing these presets on all different kinds of images. We're going in and we're refining. We're taking years and years of experience and refining power workflow into making the best preset collection that you have ever seen. And we really think that's what power workflow is. I am thrilled with how this came out and with the power that power workflow gives us. Let's apply the flat, flat light fixer to this and then let's just go in and maybe do a, a vignette and then we'll do a lens correct auto. And let's just do a little bit of cropping on this. bring it up just a little bit. 
make it kind of a little bit panoramic. And done. Now let's reset. See what we started with. Boom. To this. Quick, effective control. That's what Power Workflow gives us. Whether you're working on dynamic range and trying to bring out details. Or whether you're trying to work with batches and just get general corrections. Let's look at this. This image is really dark. We're just going to look at a few random images here. And there's nothing been done to this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bump the exposure up a little bit. But I don't want to put these highlights into clipping up here in the histogram because we have a lot of highlights back here. So I'm going to add almost probably about a stop to this and lighten it up just a little bit. I'm also going to straighten it out a little bit. I have some dust spots here. So I'm going to straighten it out. Then I'm going to press Q. Do some quick dust spot removal. Now this kind of workflow is generally something I would do after that initial edit. After I applied a batch preset to something and did kind of a, a general cleanup. Okay, now press the Q key again. I'll hide that. I'm going to go in, and let's just try the Super HDR, see how much dynamic range we can bring into this. And it really brought a lot in. I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of over-the-top tone mapped look, and there's certainly software and programs for that. And you can even mimic that to a degree in Lightroom, but oftentimes it can damage the details and the, the structure of an image. But let's just do a reset. We started with this, and we went to this. And of course, again, the power of working in this Lightroom environment with these subtle, powerful presets is that you can go in and you can, you can work this more. You could go in and you could adjust your highlights and you could adjust your shadows as far as you wanted to depending on what the intent and what the goal of your image is. Let's go through a few more of the modifiers. This one's pretty flat, so let's apply the Fix the Flat to this to give it just kind of a little bit of contrast pop. And I'm going to put the Super Saturator, which is going to bring some color into it. And then let's bring up, come up here and uh, do Gav's Radial Vignette, kind of darken those edges down a little bit. That's a little too much for this. So let's just do Command-Z. We'll undo that, and we'll do something a little more subtle, like the classic vignette number two. And let's apply a Lens Correct Auto to this as well. Quick tools right at your fingertips. And let's just kind of reset and see the original. And see what we did to this one. I'm going to bump up the exposure just a little bit on this. You're going to see a lot of really neat color effects too, especially down here in the color powers, which are kind of meant to, to work with stuff that's that's a little more bold. So oftentimes we end up with these images. Let me get this dust spot here real quick with the Q key and done. We may end up with images where we're dealing with things where the color tone is flat and it's just not that rich and warm. This is where our color powers can really come in because it can go through and give you different variations. One of the powers of using presets, regardless of your level of, of experience, is that you can get a look in an image that uses channels, that uses subtle details from within Lightroom. And it's not that you could not do those manually, it's that you wouldn't be able to try all those variations. You know, we went from this to this, and it's not over the top. It's not like you're going to put it out there and somebody's going to say, you know, what effect did you use? Honestly, when I apply an effect, to me, the best effect is the one that people don't know is there. It's about adding that control and that power. Now, there are some pretty bold effects within Power Workflow that are going to do some pretty intense applications. In fact, you'll see some of those here down in the color powers, things like LOTR, like 400 Warriors that give kind of a vintage tones. You'll also see this up here with some of the modifiers, like Bleached Color, for example, that's going to give a powerful control over those kind of tones. Let me just reset this once more. And uh, let me just reset that, and we'll come in. And just browse around a little bit more before we wrap up today. Here's an interesting one of a groom from kind of a trash the dress session of a bride and groom. And what I'm going to do is just crop it in. we got this neat tree, the wind blowing it. But again, we're dealing with some of that flat light. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to target this to start with with one of the magic presets. And let's do the ugly shade fixer. Again, a very powerful tool. Boom, just brought a lot into that image. You see that the same preset is going to affect different images more powerfully or less depending on just how the colors and how the image works because Power Workflow 4 affects very subtle things that most presets don't get so specific in. We spend a lot of time refining channels and, and the little things of, okay, how is this going to affect the color tone? How is this going to affect this or that? And a lot of different effects that can be applied. Honestly, this looks pretty good the way it is. Uh, what I could do is apply a bit of a vignette, maybe like a gradial to make this a bit more bold. 
Now, another thing we can do is the radial spot. This is a cool one that's going to be useful. And I'm going to apply this. You can see it makes it too dark. But what I'm going to do is Shift M. This is going to be in Lightroom 5 only. I'm going to bring up this radial. So this quickly ap applies a large, reasonably soft radial. And then we can kind of drag this spotlight around where we want it. Shift M to hide that again. And we've just brought that radial spotlighting that's nice and soft so it doesn't look faked and over the top right into this. And if I were to just reset this, you kind of see what we started with and what we did in just a few moments, moments here using Power Workflow 4. Let's go into here. We've already applied the super normal preset to this. I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to go in here and uh, let's apply uh, the super tone equalizer just to bring a little bit of dynamic range in here without going too far. And then we're going to go down here and let's apply the polarizer effect to bring down the blues and make those just a little bit richer. And there's any number of things we could do. You know, we could we could do Dreamscape, which is a bit soft and probably a bit over the top for this one. We could do Ultra Sport, which is really going to boost that clarity, almost a, a Lucas kind of uh, tone mapped effect. And I'm not going to do that on this one. But I just want to give you examples to kind of show you different things that we can do to different images to really bring in the power. I'm just going to put some tone control on this one to equalize it a little bit. We have already applied the super normal. You see a lot of these images that we've applied super normal to. They look good, but they're very subtly adjusted. And we can just go from there and start adding other effects. Power Workflow 4 is like no other preset collection out there. It's organized for workflow. It's planned in the order, and, and we've thought out how are we thinking as image makers? How are we coming in here, and what tools do we need at our fingertips to quickly work with these images, to work with them on import, to apply large amounts of presets in batches, to give the kind of looks that we need to gain that control and not to lose that quality. I do a lens correct auto. We've already applied, I think, some presets, but let's go ahead and make sure we've applied the tone EQ. And then let's go ahead and do a vignette, again, right up here in the Super Tools, designed so that the tools you're going to use the most often are right there at the top of the collection. And you'll want to import this whole folder in here so it's right within here and you can keep it organized within your presets panel. I'm going to put uh, the classic vignette 2 on this one and just bring those edges down just a little bit. Let's do a reset before and after. Subtle control, but a huge, huge difference. You're going to love Power Workflow 4, guaranteed. It's going to be a preset collection like nothing you've ever used, and it's going to make you more efficient. It's going to put more tools at your fingertips. You're already in Lightroom. You're already working. You already have a vision for your image. The goal of Power Workflow is not to apply a different vision to your image. It's to give you tools to get more control more variety, and to get to where you want an image to be quicker, whether it's in a batch process, selecting multiple images at a time, or working on an art type image, and really refining the individual nature of that image. I'm Gavin Syme, and this is Power Workflow 4. Jump in there and enjoy yourself.